We welcome you to Delaware Stadium, the site for the CAA semifinals here in 2023. We are happy to be along with you here on the Cross TV, our presentation of the CAA semis. We kick things off at the top seed in this conference, the Delaware Blue Hens taking on the four-seeded Towson Tigers. With that, we welcome you alongside the PLL All-Star, Marcus Holman. I'm Travis Eldridge. Marcus, these two teams played just last weekend, but it was the Tigers, the four seed coming into this, that got the best of the Blue Hens. Yeah, thanks, Travis. I'm excited to be here on the call with you tonight for these semifinal games. Uh, it's going to be fireworks. It's going to be competitive, and we're underway here with uh, Delaware and Towson. And the opening draw is a violation, and it's going to go the Tigers' way. Winner of this matchup will take on the winner of Drexel and Stony Brook. Stony Brook playing their first ever CAA tournament. That's the second semifinal coming your way a little later this evening here at Delaware Stadium. But it's the Tigers and Blue Hens, two bitter rivals that kick things off. First look at this Tigers offense for us here today in the black porthole uniforms. The throwback style as Kyle Berkeley tries to dodge in. First team all CAA performer, just named first team all CAA earlier this week. Gets that right hand free, shot wide of Matt Kilkiri, the Delaware keeper. Another chance though, long range shot and a step down and a score. It's Josh Weber who gets the Tigers on the board first. Towson coming in out of the gates, just firing. You know, they win that first face off with a violation and then just attacking on all cylinders, getting the ball through X multiple times, two shots on that possession, and that last one just stung the top corner. Towson with a hot start. Josh Weber coming into this game, 11 goals and 11 assists on the year for 22 points. He's now got one more goal than he does assists. It ruins the perfect goals and assists situation, but I think he'll take it as <laughs> Delaware wins it back. I think he'll be perfectly fine with that. And, you know, if, if Towson's going to want to win tonight, they're going to have to get, um, you know, stats, goals, assists from from guys other than Nick DeMeo and Kyle Berkeley. They're kind of known threats. So, you know, if you're a Towson fan, Weber getting going early, it's that's good for you. Something to keep in mind from the meeting this past weekend. It ended up being a 15 to 10 win for the Tigers a game there, they really got off to a hot start in the first half. They led 11 to five at halftime, scored six goals in the first quarter, really set the tone. Delaware, it, it came back in the second half, but kind of a little too little too late, dug themselves into too deep of a hole, something they certainly will look to not do here today. Yeah, no doubt. And, uh, you know, Coach DeLuca mentioned that in, in our call with him this week, right? They said that they just got blitzed and, and Towson played with more energy and desperation. You know, because Towson had to win to, to make the CAA playoffs. So you can see already here, there seems to be that they're carrying that momentum over, playing with some juice right now. And pass was just a little wide of Mike Robinson. And now Towson clears as they force the turnover. And the Tigers' offense goes back to work. Yeah, and it's funny, Travis. You know, I was just looking through the box score from last week. J.P. Ward on that pass for Delaware, just a little bit outside of Robinson's stick, he had seven turnovers in their game on Saturday. Obviously, he's going to have to cut down on those numbers if, if Delaware wants to compete and get a win tonight. And something uncharacteristic for Ward, another guy who's named first team all CAA. But it's Towson's offense that goes back to work. Weber skips down low, shot rings off of Kilkiri, might have even hit the bar as well. It resets the shot clock to 60, and it is being put back into play by Ryan Schreier. Yep, Matt Kilkiri in cage for Delaware. He was named first team all CAA this week. And then we have Evan Long down the other end for Towson, who was second team, Long with a better save percentage, so maybe feels a little bit slighted there, but great goalie bat uh, battle tonight. And another score. Towson has it going early. It's Nick DeMeo, the senior from California, to make it 2 0. There's one guy on the field tonight that's not afraid to shoot it. It's Nick DeMeo. He can shoot it from all angles, coming up the half. Really strong left handed release. He's averaging about eight a game. So, you know, coming in, right, 
he's going to get his shots off, and it's just a matter of if, if they fall or not. 25% on the season, so for him to start off hot like that, it's good for him and his confidence. Tigers just kind of picking up where they left off last Saturday as this faceoff goes right to the stick of Towson again. And if they can get it over midfield here in the next 14 seconds, another chance at an offensive possession. It's in the stick of Evan Long. Long clearing pass and finds Berkeley. You know, a little give and go. Berkeley a shot. That one hits Kilkiri. Kilkiri way out of the crease makes a slick play. And he gets it to Owen Grant to try to get it up and out. Yeah, nifty play by Kilkiri. But, but another throws turnover. It, throws it right away. Right? And, and these are just, it's, you know, it's almost identical to how the game started on Saturday. Like Delaware just a little bit nonchalant. And, you know, this is playoff lacrosse. You've got to be dialed in on the little things, the ground balls, your assignments, especially in the middle of the field where Delaware's actually really been great in the clear this year, you know, around 90%, good for seventh in the country. But you think back to some of their losses and they've, you know, failed clears. I think back to that Hopkins game earlier in the season. So got to tighten it up a little bit here in the first. Weber turns back to his left. Now Berkeley gets his hands free and he finds the back of the net. Three different goal scorers to make it 3 nothing, and the Tigers are roaring here in the semis. Got to be a timeout for Delaware here. Just to lock in with Towson. Not afraid of coming into the Blue Hens' house and waking up the Roosters. Now it's the first time this Blue Hens program has hosted the CAA tournament since 2005. Not off to a good start. 3 nothing. Time out here in the first. The CAA Men's Lacrosse Championship is brought to you by Jersey Mike's, a sub above, and by Ticket Smarter, the official ticket resale partner of the CAA. Think smarter, think Ticket Smarter. Back here at Delaware Stadium, coming out of the Delaware timeout, it's a face-off win as the Blue Hens, the top seed in the CAA semifinal, find themselves down three to nothing. And an advantage in the substitution game, but can't take advantage of it. As yep, and Ty Kurtz, JP Ward, each get a, a touch. Haven't really gotten a chance to, to meet this Delaware offense yet. Really only one touch, and it was a turnover. Nope, we haven't talked about you know, Ty Kurtz being named CAA Offensive Player of the Year. An incredible season. You know, his running mate here, number one, J.P. Ward, kind of the quarterback of Delaware's offense. You know, they're a, a one-two combo, <laughs> pun intended, with their numbers. And uh, they'll get rolling here. Opportunity. As Ward skips it back outside, Accioni has it snagged by Long. Great save by Long. He read that the whole way. And then obviously important as a goalie is to catch those shots too, right? Not allowing any rebounds as Towson's able to clear here. Oh, and especially with some of the personnel that Delaware has, especially the Canadians, Kurtz and Robinson, terrific off the ground as attackmen. You do not want to let up juicy rebounds in front with this offensive unit. No doubt. A couple Canadians down there as well. Those Canucks are sneaky around the goal with loose balls and finishing in tight. But Towson has the ball again. This is the freshman, Mikey Weishauer, part of the all-rookie team here in the CAA. Him and Joaquin Villa Gomez, number 26 in black for Towson. This and you can see, Berkeley. see similar offensive strategies, just attacking from that high wing. Getting the Save. Ball through X. Another wow. stop by Kilkiri. Back to back. Like we talked about, awesome goalie matchup here tonight. Berkeley went right down the middle, followed up his own shot, tried the BTB, and Kilkiri able to make a big save. That would have erupted Towson's sideline, I think. Yeah, that could be a gigantic momentum boost for Delaware as slowing it down here is the midfielder Clay Miller.
Delaware trying to run some substitution games here. Get offensive middies trapped on the field. See if they yep. can play out of it. This is Ward. He, he's the ex-attackman, if there is one, on this Delaware offense. You mentioned Mark is the quarterback. Had his man hung up, but decides to send it out to the wing. They'll try to dodge from there. That one off the bar. You can hear it all the way up here. Should reset the shot clock. It does. And a fresh 60 for Delaware and Ryer Shell. Yeah, and looking again, you know, I hate to keep talking about the previous game, but it shows you a lot. Ty Kurtz, you know, Delaware's leading goal scorer with only two shots. And here so far early, he's he's been relatively quiet. I don't even think he's really touched the ball. So it'll be interesting to see if they can maybe get some motions or flows for him to pop off the crease. Strong right-handed shooter. See if he can get his hands free. Garrett Singalia, the big 6'7", 235 grad student, has drawn that matchup once again with Kurtz. It's a tough guy to miss on the Towson defense. <laughs> no doubt. Big lefty. We got a flag down. There was Delaware player down, wrapping around, and the Blue Hens are on the board. It's J.P. Ward to make it 3-1. to one. Yeah, really nice job here from J.P. Ward, just playing his angles as, a, as an ex-attackman. I really like this kid's game. He reminds me a lot of, of Logan with Nowskis. I know they both wear number one and are both you know primarily left-handed players, but just super smart around the cage. Gets his defender there, playing his angles off, and he's able to turn the core. I like how he takes the extra step, right, to get to the top of the crease and buries the rock. J.P. Ward with his 30th goal of the season. First team all CAA performer. Big hit off that faceoff. That will draw a whistle. No flag, I don't see. I saw there was a flag down on that last possession. Delaware scored to wipe it off. Coach DeLuca's not going to be fired up about that. No, this is it's a big hit in the middle. It was, I think it was Logan Premtage who took that face off and then right after winning it backward. Yeah, and it, it seemed to be, you know, as he's running back towards his own goal, the attackmen are running up the field. So it's DeMeo, I think, just with the hit. Yeah. You know, nothing nothing dirty about that at all. That's a that's a clean hip check. Hopefully he's all right. I, hopefully he just got the wind knocked out of him. But Yeah, I mean, it, that was not, not vicious, not high, no. just the, the momentum of having one guy going hard one way and the other guy coming hard right back at him. Uh, that's good to see Remtaj walk off the field here. Good news for Delaware is they got a couple of guys that they have used there at the face-off position, including Roland Hockenberry. He's taken a lot of face-offs this year. So yep, and we we'll, have we'll, other options at that spot if Logan Premtaj isn't ready to go right back away. No doubt. We'll keep an eye on that, you know, stat as the night goes on. Towson brings in Matt Constantinides first in the conference, you know, 66% facing off. So, you know, that possession – battle will be important as the night goes on here's robinson from the wing this part of the season due to injury after a terrific last couple of years for delaware it took him a little while to get going but you have to remember how good he's been for this blue hens program as ward is really bodied up somehow keeps it now it's on the turf and townsen comes up with it reagan mcnamara with the ground ball Great defensive possession there and slide from Towson. You know that's going to make Coach Sean Natalin very happy, a former USA defender himself, one of the toughest dudes to ever play the sport of lacrosse. So those cross-crease slides on an inside roll and being physical, that's just a part of Towson's DNA. Austin Stewart brings it across. And now the offense can set up for Towson again. Up 3-1, to one, under six minutes to go in this opening quarter. This is Villa Gomez, the freshman. Stewart joined by Andrew Milani, the redshirt junior midfielder. 
Guy who's earned himself back some playing time after finding his way onto the practice squad, the scout squad offense for a while in the middle of this year, but has earned his way back into the rotation at midfield as DeMeo shoot that one falling down wide. Yeah, second line midfield out there for Towson. I like DeMeo being aggressive there off the dodge. Quickly on the restart, Kilkiri, juicy rebound. That'll reset the shot clock to 60, and Villa Gomez has the rebound. Right. All of these little ground ball battles will end up at the end of the night. Milani has it stripped, and it shows Spears, the long stick midfielder, who comes up with the cause turnover and a ground ball. Delaware sets up shop once again. Just the one goal so far in this opening quarter. An offense that ranked 10th in the country coming in, almost 15 goals a game. Yep, and, and honestly, I think one of the most complete attack units in Division I. Off the crossbar again from the freshman, Brendan Powell. Robinson takes the big hit, and wow. that will draw the flag. And I think for as, as clean as a couple of the hits have been early, that one might have been a little bit high, maybe up in his helmet. I just love I love the physicality of this conference so much, Travis. It, it feels like every game, especially in the playoffs, you know, big hits are a plenty. Yeah, I think he just got him a little bit high up in the helmet. You saw his his head snap back there. We want to obviously protect the players, especially guys that are defenseless. So But yeah, that that is what this conference is about. You don't bring toughness into the, the CAA conference game. You're going to be in trouble. No doubt. And and for Towson, it's, it's just about managing that, right? Like Delaware comes in seventh in the country in man up, right? They're, they're a 50% unit. So if Towson is going to foul, you know, five, six times tonight, you're, you know, you're going to give up three, maybe four goals, right? So just – being smart about when you're being aggressive is going to be important for the defense. Here. So our first look at this Delaware man up unit, Marcus just hit on it. They have been terrific. It is a two minute wow. penalty for a cross check. So this is a huge opportunity for the blue hens. I believe it's also non-releasable as that shot is wide from powers. And Towson electing, it looks like they're going to shut off Ty Kurtz number two. So, He's going to be in the crease. There's four defensemen rotating around them, and, and Delaware's just playing a five-on-four on the outside. You'll see Kurtz try and seal one of those defensemen as the rotation moves. Robinson back to Powers here in the near side wing. Shot clock's winding down. That's the thing about a two-minute unreleasable penalty here is that it doesn't mean you get two minutes of a shot clock here. So only 13 <laughs> seconds left of the shot clock for Delaware. Yeah, really nice job by Towson. I don't think Delaware knows. Down to four. You got to hurry. Robinson trying to skip it across and Long intercepts it. That's huge. Huge stop for Towson, right? Because of the two-minute penalty now, you're able to potentially kill off all of it. And they get it over midfield. Berkeley can just play keep away. So the Tigers are going to be able to get this back to even strength. And another huge momentum swing here. Thought maybe the Kilkiri saves for Delaware would get something going. Let's see if this boosts Towson. No doubt. And like, I just, I, I chalk that up as just a winning play for Towson, right? And, you know, as a team, your goal is to just accumulate as many winning plays as possible, whether it's in-line runouts or great picks or winning in the sub game. You know, all of those, those plays factor into, like, momentum, which Towson has, again, you know, coming in here on the road and just controlling that momentum early is, is really important, kind of take the crowd out of it and let their fans get excited for them. So we're back to even strength. Now down to 10 seconds in the shot clock for the Tigers. Weishauer. 
Out top, Villa Gomez. Freshman to freshman, one-handed, and Kilkiri stopped that easily. Trying that was a cheek, him. cheeky little one-hander from Villa Gomez. That was nifty. <laughs> nice job by Kilkiri on it. You know, there's going to be no easy goals with, with these two keepers tonight. You're going to have to earn it. Heck of a freshman season for Villa Gomez. 27 goals, 8 assists, 35 points coming into today. Yep, was freshman. It? Out of Saberna Park High School, right? Coach Natalon does a great job recruiting in the, the public school sector in Maryland. Strong defense there, but a quick pass down to Ward on the doorstep, and he's got both for the Blue Hens to make it 3-2. to two. And that was Cam Accioni on the feed. This guy is super fun to watch. And another player comparison I can think of that I might be dating myself a little bit here is uh, Jeremy Noble, who used to play at Denver and played indoor for a while. They wear number 45 together, Canadian, incredible stick fakes and feed there. JP Ward is Johnny on the spot for an easy finish. Yeah, Ward, most of the time, the guy assisting on the goals, he's – been the guy scoring him so far. He's got two. And now a possession after a whistle at the faceoff X. And Jason Sider can bring it in with the under a minute to go in this opening quarter. So despite some of the struggles here for Delaware, you know, one final possession and they can yeah. go into the quarter break tied if they can get one more. No doubt. Big one here. We'll see what they go with. Maybe attacking from this kind of high wing angle. And they've had success, I think, just kicking the ball through X with J.P. Ward, and then we'll see if they can get a good shot off. This is Jason Kohler, who has it way out here at a 40-yard line on the football field line. And now he's going to go. Full head of steam, sends it behind. Wrapping around. That was Jessen. Now Kurtz from the high far wing gets a shot off. Think Long made a save. A couple of seconds left. Ward has to just send this in front. He does. Good luck at Chioni. Can't get it on frame. Kurtz too late. And that is how this opening quarter will come to a close. So an entertaining one, a great start for Towson. However, Delaware, the top seed in this tournament, the host school battling back. It's 3-2 after one. You're watching the CAA Men's Lacrosse Championships on the Cross TV. Back here at Delaware Stadium, start of the second quarter. Face-off win by Logan Premtosh. So, Mark, is good news there. We see Logan Premtosh, who took that big hit in that first quarter. He's back out there for a face-off here to start the second, and Delaware will get an offensive possession. Yep, and, and Delaware, with, with that early lead in, in the face-off battle, you know, winning five of seven. Here's Ty Kurtz dodging in, goes up top, but long too good. Awesome save there by Long, matching stick on stick inside. Towson's going to push the other way. So Long with a couple of saves here early. Kilkerry actually has five saves already for Delaware. Both goalies with a strong start so far today. Yep, and the, the other thing, right, is just like that internal clock ticking for Ty Kurtz, right? You know, now he's he's got two shots, no goals. Didn't score on Saturday, you know. It's interesting to see maybe if he'll start pressing a little bit more, playing outside of his game, or if he's just comfortable letting his teammates do work and he can be a complimentary player. And another goal. It's the freshman, Mikey Weishauer, with his first in postseason play, and it's 4-2 Towson. Just a really nice low-wing dodge here. By Ryan Schreier, I think number two. He's able to get underneath, just have his eyes up and finish the ball inside. That's Schreier on the goal. And sorry, Weishauer on the goal, Schreier on the assist. 
So the Tigers a strong start to the second, 4-2. to two. Remember, if you're just joining us, this Tigers team beat Delaware last weekend to solidify their spot in this week's CAA tournament. And a early go for Roland Hockenberry will give it back to Towson. Matt Constantinides, the Towson faceoff man, had was trying to go quickly, and the officials held him up. Now we'll finally go into play, and you can Let see Constantinides. <laughs> he's like, hey, man, I, I just wanted to get a chance, maybe run at the goal, face off guy. We don't get yeah. a lot of chances at that. We saw him score a couple weeks ago against Denver, so he's not afraid to, to take it to the rack. And, you know, if you're a Towson fan, the, the future's bright, right? Three out of their tops, top six guys are freshmen. You know, Villa Gomez, Weishauer, and Dreyer, you just saw them connect. So, some bright young Great. talent here for, for the Towson Tigers. Great play. They're getting a stick of the passing lane was Tate Wasson, but he can't keep it in. So it'll stay Tigers' ball as Villa Gomez puts it back in play. Weber takes a run from the top of the box. Spinning back toward the middle. A little bit of space. Great offensive motion there. They were just one pass off. They had Delaware sliding and recovering, not able to connect. They're kind of that final piece of the puzzle. Delaware with an opportunity to try to cut into this lead once again. Yeah, and, and Delaware pretty consistently from defense to offense has been trying to run these substitution games to little outcome, I think. So what it does is it, it just cuts into the time that you can play offense. So it'll be interesting to see if they adjust or if they stay with it and just try to set better, better picks up top. Falling down. There was Powers, and it's a ground ball still loose now. That's a tough ground ball for the Tigers. They had a couple of white jerseys around, but it's the black jersey that comes up with it. And now Colby Bars will give it up, and it's offsides. A little bit chaotic in between the lines here. Box coaches have their hands full. Never a fun fun job when you're the box coach and your team goes off sides. You just get that glare from, from the head coach. Ty Kurtz back to work for Max. Delaware team not only the top seed this year at 6-1 and one in conference, also the defending CAA tournament champs. As Kurtz, I don't know if that one ever got through, deflects back into the stick of shell. Powers spinning back, shoots wide. Delaware trying to do something that Towson was the last school to do. No repeat CAA champions here on the men's side since Towson did it, and they won three in a row from 2015 to 2017. Yep, and that and that run, you know, culminated in a in a Final Four berth in a game that they were leading at halftime, almost a trip to the national championship. So Delaware trying to establish themselves kind of as the kings of the CAA. Kurtz rolls near his side. He's in the crease. And that'll be Towson ball. Again, nice timing on the slide there by Towson. They got numbers if they want it. Quickly the other way. Step down shot just wide and no backup for the Tigers. It's a pretty good look by Brandon Hunt, the short stick D mini, but they didn't have anybody to back it up. And so it'll be Delaware ball as we get a timeout. Here on the field, we'll keep it here. A little less than five minutes into this second quarter. Travis Eldridge, Marcus Holman with you here in this first semifinal of the CAA Men's Lacrosse Championships. And Marcus, coming up next, we're going to get Drexel and Stony Brook, which was a terrific game the first time the two met earlier this season. An overtime thriller that the Dragons won 
much like we're seeing here in this first semifinal, we expect a terrific one coming up later on tonight. Yeah, no doubt. And, and it was really fun on the coaches' calls this week with Coach Gilardi of, of Stony Brook and Coach Volker from Drexel just being candid about their teams. You know, Coach Volker last night was like, yeah, I mean, if we play well, we can win. But if we don't, we won't. And I don't really know what's going to happen. And, and Coach Gilardi, you know, echoed that, that sentiment. So, um, you know, it's just going to be a matter of who can make some more plays. But two very, very evenly matched teams in our in our second uh, game here tonight. And honestly, in, in the first game as well, these two teams match up pretty well. It's been competitive so far. Well, we'll see Drexel and Stony Brook later. Now, a reminder that you can check out Lacrosse TV's Watch Party on our YouTube page. Playlists featuring dozens of instant classics of all the CAA teams, including all the drama from the Men's and Women's Conference Championships. Plus, you'll get great interviews with players and coaches who give us a behind-the-scenes look at some of the big moments in CAA lacrosse history here recently. You can watch Lacrosse TV Watch Party on YouTube. Of course, maybe the most famous semi-final moment in CAA men's lacrosse history happened in a semi-final. It was actually the late one that, that UMass and Hofstra game, the midfield shot at the buzzer that, that won it all. Dan Muller for UMass. Of course, the Minutemen no longer here in the CAA, but uh, providing some terrific moments here in the semifinals over the years and now we get a chance to see Stony Brook for the first time in that next semifinal a new, new addition to this league and they've provided plenty of talent it is a little little odd without you know UMass the Minutemen um, you know obviously one of my great friends Will Manny a, a very famous alum of, of UMass but I think Stony Brook's been a very formidable replacement two gritty teams great coaches and uh, you know great addition to the conference in Stony Brook Oh, that one's off the bar. Rebound back out. And this one's kept out by Long. What right off the crossbar? Nothing will get by Evan Long. Wow, what a flurry there. Long stays big. I think he got some help from the crossbar on that last one. but He did. He is hanging tough in there for this Towson defense. Oh, man. Delaware has to just be ready to go crazy after how many good looks they had. Now it's Berkeley to slow it down for the Tigers. I mean, that's just one of those times where you have to go, what, what do we need to do to put it into the back of the net? That's right. Oh, man, it seems like sometimes the ball has that magnetic chip on it for the, the pipe or the goalie's helmet or something. So Weber. That pass a little high. Comes back out toward midfield. And oh it's gosh. Delaware who's got it. Look out. Back flip, and it was looking for Ward. Never got there. That was an interesting decision, and now back come the Tigers, and they'll yeah, settle bit, things down a bit. A little bit sloppy on, on both ends, and then, you know, that's Owen Grant coming up with the ground ball by the midline. You know, the senior, the future professional, you just, as a coach, you would like to see him make a better decision than, you know, a backhanded flip you know, in some traffic. So another wasted wasted opportunity for Delaware. And Grant, the now three-time CAA Defensive Player of the Year. First ever three-time winner of that award in this conference. Wow. In, in a conference with <laughs> that's produced a lot of, you know, incredible defensemen and professionals and, you know, Hall of Fame professional defensemen. He's got a very bright career ahead of him at the indoor and outdoor level professionally. Yeah. Yeah, already a draft pick by the Vancouver Warriors, picked third overall in the NLL draft, and we think sometime next week here in the PLL draft, likely going to have his name called. That shot wide here. Let's see who wins that race. That was a, good, that was a pretty good hustle play by Kevin Lynch. Just couldn't quite beat DeMeo there to the sideline. Yep, short seconds. time here for Towson. Yep. Got to go quickly. Under 10 on the shot clock. Villa Gomez shoots high. Now to six. We'll see what DeMeo decides to do here.
And he's just going to send it to the corner. Smart. Got to play the long game there. Right? And I think Towson's doing a great job defensively. I mean, to hold this Delaware team to two goals in essentially a quarter and a half so far is a feat. Yep. And you, you feel like, again, you know, that the water is building up. You know, the dam might break. But... You know, long in cage and some good slides from, from this Towson defense. And, you know, I think Delaware's gotten some quality chances. They just, you know, haven't been able to, to score. That's Ward that will settle things down here. Delaware looking for a spark. Ward has been the spark. He's got the only two goals for the Blue Hens so far today. Kohler lining up a long run. Good defense. Accioni sends it behind. Ward looking for a cutter. Ward lowers the shoulder, hands free off the bar again. Yep, you can hear that iron from here. That gives Delaware a reset. Right, That's a newer rule to college lacrosse. Any shot off the pipe or... Part of the goalie will reset the shot clock to 60 seconds instead of the full 80 like it has been in years past. Kurtz draws a lot of attention. Now he gets it up to Accioni, scrambling for the defense, and Delaware makes him pay. It's Kohler on the backside who makes it 4-3. to three. Jason, Jason Kohler with a really smooth finish here, and again, it's, it's Accioni making plays with the ball on his stick, a really smooth skip pass to the pipe, and he's setting up his teammates for easy, easy dunks tonight. Towson just got a little bit out of sorts there with two men out of position, and Delaware able to capitalize. So Delaware's back within one. And we've got a... Whistle on Delaware on that faceoff. Gives it back to the Tigers. Constantinides, despite the fact he's up close to 57% on the year, actually under 50% so far today. Three of his first eight. However, Towson has had plenty of the ball. Yeah, and this, this next five minutes is huge, right? Is is Delaware going to be able to get over the hump and, and tie this thing up, or can Towson kind of keep keep control of this game? Uh-oh. Weishauer oh. gets a hand free, but Kilkiri saw it the whole way. weishauer has got a really, really good shake and first step to him. He's going to be a dyna dynamic player to watch, but not able to probably put that shot where he would have liked. Kilkiri able to save it pretty clean. Uh-oh, that's a flag. There, he got a trip. We play on, flag yeah, numbers. will be coming. Robinson, you know he loves that left hand, down to one, and he scores. A first half hat trick for J.P. Ward, and we're tied at four. Absolutely, and you can hear the crowd kind of erupt there. And I believe that's going to be a trip on the sideline, so this flag will hold up. Lower is going to be man up the face. Good patience here by, by Robinson, rolling back to his strong left hand, and then patience, too, from Ward. <laughs> Almost faked himself out, but clean finish. Number one's got a hat trick. J.P. Ward, first team all CAA. Like we said, he leads the team in assists, nearly 40 of them this year. He can score as well. He's got three goals now up to 32 on the season. The junior from Owings Mills, Maryland. Has tied this thing up at four apiece. About five minutes left in this opening half. This is a huge faceoff, too. Wow. That's big time. Hockenberry wins it back, and Spears will get it to the offense. Delaware has not led in this game. They've trailed from the very beginning. Hot start for Towson. And let's see if Towson elects to shut off Kurtz. It worked on that first man up. It looks like they're going to go into it again. We'll see if Delaware has a little bit more of a plan or if they could just elect to kind of freelance and, and let Kurtz screen some of these defensemen. Remember, it is man up here off that faceoff. So six on five for Delaware. 
Good movement, and they got their first lead. At Chioni from distance. They've scored five of the last six goals. Delaware looked a little bit more organized on that man up. Even though they, you know, were still kind of electing to just move the ball. But when you when you have a player get shut off like that, the rest of your guys, right, you've got to be aggressive and you got to be shooters, right? The reason Towson's shutting off Kurtz is because he's their best goal scorer. So the five other guys have to step up. Accioni catches that ball in stride. You know, no hesitation and puts it on cage. He's playing with some confidence. I think a goal and two assists for him tonight. Yeah, it's a strong start for the junior from Ontario. Played his high school across the Hill Academy for the great Brody Merrill. As Spears comes up with the ground ball, he pushes it ahead. Delaware looking to run. Skip pass too tall for Kurtz. Has it deflected away. And it's the Tigers who come up with it. Barth moves it ahead. That ball's still loose. Chaos. Now it's Wasson who's got a chance at the ground ball. Nifty play. And wow. He it to himself. Delaware playing with a little bit more juice right now. You can kind of sense it, can't you, Travis? Yeah. Remember, this is a Delaware team. They're a top seed a couple of years ago, 2021. They ran into Hofstra in the CAA semifinals, ended a season which was really promising. They had some promise in the non conference, a team. Very much like this year, right around that top 20 for a good portion of the season. But they saw their season end with an upset loss against Hofstra, trying to avoid that same fate here today. Great takeaway check. You know, you think of this Towson program and all the great short stick D middies. It's just something, it's a calling card for this program. That was Reese Potter who made a great play. Yeah, and he's he's been next in line for them. He's... Every time we call a Towson game, he's making a play, whether it's a calls turnover or something in transition, and he's a lefty too, so nice job by Reese. He had a timeout. Towson wants to talk things over, trailing by one. Your final three minutes of this first half. Smart timeout here for head coach Sean Nadalin. Wants to settle things down, see if they can get something offensively as Delaware has found some rhythm here at the other end of the field, scoring five of the last six. Remember, it's a 3 nothing Towson lead here to start. So you look at Delaware, a, a team that in the non-conference, they tested themselves, didn't get that marquee non-conference win. Maybe they were looking for coming off the run to the NCAA quarterfinals last year after they had upset Georgetown in the first round. But this is a team with a lot of the same pieces that made that run last year that you know if they can find a way to win two games here this weekend at home and get into the tournament, they're a team that not a lot of top seeds are going to want to see. Absolutely, yeah. And it's funny, I was just out of curiosity, I was doing a little bit of research just on these CAA teams and how they fared in the NCAA tournament. And you go back a couple years, Towson was actually a home team in I think 2019 yeah you know they lost to Maryland by one um you know 2020 we had COVID 2021 I think Drexel lost by two out at Notre Dame in a game that they were up you know Delaware with the upset last year so like traditionally the winner of this conference makes some noise or is is really just nipping on the heels of you know say a, a big bigger name big 10 team or an ACC team so always have respect for this conference even back you know 10 years ago when I was playing in college, we, you know, we, f we faced a tough UMass team in our fourth game of the season and they beat us on a neutral field. So, you know, it's just a tough, gritty conference. And, you know, Delaware is obviously trying to establish themselves, you know, as, as the front runner here. Yeah, I mean, you, you mentioned the NCAA tournament history. This Towson team, a couple of years ago, back in 2016, they knocked off Denver at Denver when they were at that point, the defending national champs shocked a, a lot of people. Yeah on the road. Uh, UMass, the, the following year there um, in, uh, in 2017, I believe, the year Yale won the championship, Yale's probably toughest test came in the first yeah. round against UMass. So yeah. the, this CAA, the t team that wins this conference tournament is a, a team that typically makes some kind of noise, whether they win or not, they make things really difficult for a team that's a top eight seed. No doubt. This Weishauer stepping into one, and he's even things back up. Second freshman goal. to freshman connection yeah. there. 
Villa Gomez to Weishauer. Right, both local to the Annapolis region. Weishauer played at Spalding. Was I believe Maryland's best high school player last year. Villa Gomez at Severna Park and just a really nice job. Weishauer slips into that slot behind the defenseman. Much better placement on this shot compared to his last one. Look at that. Off hip, low. Very tough save for Kilkiri. Yeah, Weishauer, very highly regarded recruit. The, the Markland Kelly Award winner. Capital Gazette Player of the Year in high school as well. As Owen Grant right off the faceoff. The Defensive Player of the Year in the conference gives you some offense. And it's Delaware back in front. Well, I think you might have heard me maybe talk <laughs> about his, his uh, decision-making earlier when he had the opportunity in the offensive end. But it was honestly a just a matter of time until we called Owen Grant's name making a play like this in the middle of the field. You know, not only the wherewithal to catch the ball and have the confidence in traffic, but you almost just – the confidence that he has to, has to shoot it, right, and bury it. Really impressive stuff. Yeah, seven goals this season as Constantinidis trips trying to – Push it forward. Ball loose by the sideline, kept in. And it comes up. Delaware. They're looking to run again. This is Wasson, and he shoots wide. <laughs> They're trying to go back to back with the lefty poles. Nice Tate. job by Towson there, you know, hedging, making that a tough decision for him, right? You have three very lethal attackmen. So you want to be smart about your slide decisions. Again, just well coached on the defensive end. Tate Watson, by the way, has zero career points, the junior. <laughs> so he wanted that one really badly. No doubt. He was probably like, what do I do? What do I do? Good look here. Got deflected on its way to long. Kurtz a chance at the rebound. Way out here close to midfield. Trying to pick up the ground ball. And it's a loose ball push. We'll keep uh, it with Delaware and get them a reset of the shot clock. I would, I would love to have a mic over in Coach Natalin's ear right now to see what he thinks of that call. I thought that was a little ticky-tack, but... I'm assuming he probably did, too. And yeah, the sidearm pass deflected. Tigers get it. Kurt's still just a little sloppy there. You know, he's, he's had the ball on his stick a couple times, and, you know, maybe that, that the mental piece of, of this game of lacrosse is just as important as the physical and... Got to get it over midfield. Zingalia barely does. That's trouble, though. And now he has to take it away. Spears comes up with it. They got numbers if they want it. About a minute to go in this first half. Ward quickly ahead. Delaware can pretty much hold for one here at the end of the half if they want. Make sure you ensure you go into the half at least with the one goal lead and possibly two. Yep, the competitor in me wanted to see Delaware always push transition but the coach in me is is applauding JP Ward for pulling the ball out right making sure again winning these end of quarter situations has is just so important right it, it's not so much about you scoring a goal but it's about you not allowing the other team a, a shot in transition to give them momentum back out top of the box Robinson right hand shot long stops it Still have time for the Tigers to go back the other way. Great outlet pass. DeMeo shoots wide. Nice skip pass from Villa Gomez there. That was a pretty good look. They'll send it in front, and that is how the first half will end. So Towson scores the first three. Delaware responds, and it's the Blue Hens, the top seed. And has a 6-5 lead here at the half. We'll be back with second half action in a bit. But for now, it's halftime. You're watching the CAA Men's Lacrosse Championships, the semifinals on Lacrosse TV. We welcome you back here to the campus of the University of Delaware. Delaware Stadium, the spot for the CAA Men's Lacrosse Championships. First semifinal at halftime. It's Delaware 6, Towson 5 as we get ready to start this third quarter. Travis Eldridge and Marcus Holman back with you here on Lacrosse TV, the first of two semifinals. And it was a great start for Towson. The fourth seed in this tournament came in, jumped out to a 3-0 lead here on the road. But Delaware 
scoring six of the last eight goals that were scored in that first half. And so it's a Delaware lead as we get ready to start the third quarter. Marcus, we saw, despite the fact we saw Delaware with a flurry of goals there, especially in that second quarter, Evan Long, the goalie for Towson, played really well. Evan Long, really solid in cage, making a couple, like, awesome doorstep stops. And the key, I think, in this first half has, has been right here at the faceoff X. Delaware with the Logan Premtage here taking it in. Oh, my gosh. He goes oh. right in, and he scores. And Logan Premtage to the rack. It's crushed again, gets right up. And we got fireworks kicking off the second half here. Remember, oh he got my. leveled earlier on that yeah. hit. I mean, scrappy play there from Premtage. And then they roll out Hockenberry here, who's going to take the next one. Constantinides has taken every face off for Towson. So, two headed monster for Delaware winning this matchup. Oh, what a way to start this third quarter. And Constantinides, who we mentioned, had a lot of success in the regular season overall. Just four of 13 so far. He does win this one. And he's starting to, he starts, you start to get the feeling Tigers could use a goal here in response. Yeah, it's, it, you know, after that start, like you mentioned, you know, it's been a, a seven to two run by Delaware. So Towson's looked good and they haven't completed a couple good possessions. They've got to shoot the ball well on Kilkiri. I think that off hip is a, is a great spot to shoot on him, but they got to work for good looks. This is Kyle Berkeley. He draws a crowd. And the pass is low for Schreier on the ground. Big ground ball comes into the stick of ice shower. Tough play there by Schreier to just kind of keep that ball alive. And Weishauer to come in and, and scoop it up. He got absolutely hacked. I think that was by either Spears or Owen Grant. So tough ground ball for sure. Berkeley moves it along. This is DeMeo. That's his spot. That far wing. Looking for a cutter inside. That went off the crossbar. Body flying. Somehow he stayed out of the crease as he fell toward it. Villa Gomez comes up with the ground ball. It reset the shot clock. Yeah, that was a great... It looked behind the back, off the pipe. I don't think Kilkiri got a piece of that. DeMeo, tough catch. Skip pass, intercepted. Delaware had dropped back into his zone on that possession, and Wasson comes up with the pick. Just a, a little bit of a forced, oh, look out. And now Wasson scoop passes it right to a Towson player. <laughs> Whoa, Owen oh, Grant with a takeaway for his highlight reel. Yep. Oh, my oh, gosh. Oh, and they got him back. This is wild. Absolute chaos right now. Sticks flying everywhere. The ball's all over the place. We've got a yard sale at Delaware Stadium. <laughs> Everything must go. Everything must go. Wow. I mean, those, th those two takeaway checks we saw were just spectacular. It was Sam Morin, who, got, who came back the long stick midi for Towson, who got the response. Wild sequence there. Towson runs out their second midfield line. And again, here's a... Big momentum possession, right? Towson's had like three chances now. If they can score and get one, it's big for them. But if, De if Delaware can get another stop, they'll be juiced as well. Milani shoots high. Actually, that hit the top of the crossbar again. We've had a lot of yeah. pipes today so far, both sides. So another least, fresh 60. At least two or three each team. Nice double team. Uh-oh. Look out. Kilkiri's way out of the crease. And DeMeo took his eyes off of it. Tough sun angle right there, too. You see the shadows yeah. coming across the field. That's the, the sun is right into the eyes of the players that are on that far side if they're looking toward the near side here. Yeah, and, and that's, that's a matchup you're not going to win versus the sun. So just being aware of it. Right, trying to throw those passes maybe from a little bit of a lower angle, but um, more so in the clear with those long overpasses, that's when it can get tricky.
hit by Kilkiri. Let's see if they can clear it, though. This has been a little bit of a problem for Delaware. Kilkiri. Well, in the year, they've been great, but Towson, the ride tonight has been pretty good. A couple of seconds still left to get it over, and they do no problem. And really just the first possession here for Delaware in, in the second half comes, you know, four minutes into the quarter because we had that quick goal from Premtage. The attack didn't really touch the ball. So if, if you're Delaware here, you want to get – you want to get everybody involved. Dodge, share the rock, get everybody a touch, get their feet underneath of them. I like Accioni initiating on this shorty. Looks you missed like the first gonna... half. Ty Kurtz with, once again, no points. Towson's done a really good job on the offensive player of the year in this conference and now back-to-back -back games. Nick Jessen has it just outside the box here in the near side. Beats his man. Step down, shot and a score. One man show. He jukes, gets his hands free, steps down, and Delaware's got a three goal advantage for the first time. Jessen with a really nice move in the high corner. And I think this was the result of a sub game because on defense for Towson, that's Andrew Milani, who's been recently inserted as a second line midfielder. You can see there, he barely got a piece of Jessen. So Delaware staying with that sub game in the second half, it eventually pays off. Constantinides wins it forward for the Tigers. Towson gets the ball back, but now trailing by three. And you, you look back at all the, the two or three different shot clock resets they got on that last possession including a, a bit of a flurry of teams trading possessions but they had two three chances to put one in not able to get a goal that's a two goal swing you go back the other way with Delaware getting one yep and and they've been patient they've been moving the ball sharing it just got to stay locked in Delaware being much more aggressive I think with their double team it just seems like they want to speed the pace up of this game nice play yeah, it's a nifty advantage. Nearly taken away again by a great check for Delaware. Instead, it's Weber, Schreier. Berkeley moves it behind to Villa Gomez. Wrapping far side. That one may have found the side of the cage. Does not reset the clock. Though so a loose ball push will. Ooh, and those are, oh man, those are just the penalties. As a coach, you're like, why? Like, <laughs> loose ball, trickling towards the end line. Don't push the guy in the back. Even if he picks it up, there's 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Now, with a silly foul, right, you give them a fresh 60 and a chance to reset their offense. A couple of assists in the first half for Joaquin Villagomez, the freshman. He gives it up to his fellow freshman, Mikey Weishauer. Looking for that cutter inside. Delaware did a nice job collapsing. And it and, the and stick to Kilkiri. Solid defense by Delaware and good patience by Towson. But if you just put that pass on that guy's ear, he might score. Robinson puts the brakes on. Delaware yep. will settle it down. You, you know, it just feels like the Delaware defense has been a little bit more yeah. aggressive here in the third quarter. Yeah, for sure. You can tell they're just kind of they're dictating the pace, right? And you know, again, it's it's a Towson team that has three freshmen, you know, consistently playing down there that are, they're not just role players. You know, they, those freshmen are, you know, they're almost their main guys. So, you know, their first playoff experience really, and, and Delaware is very experienced on that defensive end. Robinson. Kind of Let's see who wins this race to the end line, and it's going to be Towson ball. Good hustle by Long. I personally would have loved to see a dive out there, Travis. You know, I'm <laughs> I'm keen of those. Yeah. For the looks as much as the practicality of them. <laughs> Every possession matters. You know, Evan Long, it just you see it. You don't see it until we get the close-up shots. But just 5'6", he is not a large keeper. It, it, you know, it, it, it 
I saw it there when he came out of the, the cage and was taking about two steps for every one that JP Ward was taking. <laughs> so just scurrying to the end line there to make a play. Nice job. Long, the redshirt junior out of Westchester, Pennsylvania. That pass, oh, I don't know. There it is. Towson's got it still. I think there is some confusion as to who had it for a second. Weber, long run from the top of the box. By Shower. Looking for that sidearm pass, and it comes free. Owen Grant will <laughs> have to give it up. Check was good, but then he got him with the push. Yep. Again, a little bit of a size differential there, so I don't know if it was an egregious push, but more just like a a mass differential there. <laughs> yeah, it's you know, it's it's like when Steph Curry goes flying through the lane. Yeah, he gets Look, hit by LeBron. He's going to move a little bit further. For sure. Ryan Swain, grad student, captain. Ball moved along. Grant got his body in the way again. And and Towson just does not look comfortable against this Delaware defense. Delaware sliding early, just really dictating the pace to these Towson middies and attackmen. Completely opposite from what we saw at the beginning of the game. Good look there. Big hit. Rebound up top. Ten seconds left in this shot clock. And two big hits. Things get a little feisty inside. In between two teams have now played twice in the last six days. Yeah. Familiar with each other. Second half of semifinals, right? You don't often get chances to compete for championships, so you got to take advantage and leave it all out on the field. Both these teams definitely are. Swain trying to feed it inside, and Delaware has just not allowed that pass. You know, that we saw the Big Ten men's semifinals earlier today, and it was Michigan and Maryland winning in the semifinals. Both teams that lost against their opponents in the regular season. Delaware trying to flip the script here on Towson in the same way. Yeah, and, you know, you look at the records, right, and, you, you know, you see Towson at 6-8, and eight, and you see Delaware at 10-4, and four, and you're like, oh, well, that's going to be an easy game for Delaware. But the conference records, you know, Towson was 5-2 and two this year in the CIA. Delaware 6-1. and one. So two pretty evenly matched teams. Delaware definitely feeling the momentum right now. And I think the scary thing about this Delaware team is that they're a complete team. You know, everybody talks about their offense and, and the bona fide scores that they have, but they're winning this game on the defensive end of the field. No doubt. The ball has been down here for the majority of this third quarter and they've been very stout. Yeah. I mean, you think about you, you've gotten a Delaware has gotten a goal off the face off. You've gotten a goal in transition. Their offense hasn't been spectacular today but the defense has helped really kind of stem the tide. And just as we sing their praises, Kyle Berkeley gets inside. He's got his second today. Cuts it back to a two-goal game. And if you're a Towson fan, right, you just take a breath of, of relief there because this is your bread and butter, right? You have some complimentary players. DeMeo's a great shooter, but Berkeley operating out of this wing as a dodger and a feeder is is very lethal for Towson. So nice job settling down. That was a huge possession to get, you know, your grad student the ball and, and put the ball on his stick and say, go make a play. And he responded well. Constantinides a face-off win. You know, you hit on the Towson record. I mean, when you look at it, though, you look at the games they lost, the one goal overtime loss to a Loyola team that's playing in the Patriot League semis. You got a two-goal loss to a Denver team that might make a, a might be an at-large berth in the NCAA tournament if they don't win the Big East. He obviously had a, a tough loss earlier in the season to, against Virginia on the road, a, a, obviously one of the best teams in the country. I mean, they certainly tested themselves out of conference, and they lost a couple of really tight games in the process. No doubt. And they're always well-coached, and they always play tough. And that's a recipe that'll keep you in any game. 
There's Weber, moves it along, down shot, and Townsend's back within one. And this is what a possession differential will do to a defense, right? Towson's just grinding along, chipping away here. You go back to your, your senior and your leader, Kyle Berkeley, off of ball movement, right? Really nice job. I love the overhand release, right? You can – low to high might look cooler at some points, but consistently to score the ball, you're going to have to shoot overhand. Berkeley does it really well. Face-off win for Delaware. Got to escape this pressure, though. This is Sam tough. Morin Coming applying it. Delaware takes timeout. Yep. And usually as a coach, you want to save them for the fourth quarter, but I think that's a smart timeout to kind of just shift the momentum back in Delaware's favor by Coach Saluka. Well, we've got ourselves a one-goal game here late in the third. Delaware with 8-7 lead. You're watching the CAA Men's Lacrosse Championships on Lacrosse TV. We welcome you back here to Delaware Stadium. Make sure you don't miss Lacrosse TV's coverage of the Men's and Women's CAA Lacrosse Championships coming your way Saturday. We'll have both games live on Saturday, starting with the Women's Championship at 12.30 Eastern Time. Chris Marshall, Kylie O'Miller on the call for that one. Then at 3.30 Eastern, right here at Delaware Stadium, we'll have the Men's CAA Championship. Marcus and I will once again be on the call for that. It's CAA Championship Lacrosse right here on Lacrosse TV. And the Women's Championship game is set. Towson and Stony Brook, who actually played a really good game a couple of weeks ago, will meet in the CAA Women's Lacrosse Championship 12.30 Saturday afternoon here on Lacrosse TV. Stony Brook, of course, first season in the conference and that program knows a thing or two about winning conference titles trying to <laughs> win their first in the CAA. No doubt. I'm sure Kylie O'Miller is very excited and fired up to be on the call. I'm sure she will not be biased in any way towards mm. Stony Brook. No, no way, <laughs> shape, or form. She is a professional, Marcus. <laughs> Is Delaware trying to build up their lead again. It's back down to one. Kohler sends it behind. You got J.P. Ward tiptoeing in the crease back there. He's got his man hung up. Now they're just trying to find some space in front. Three goals in the first half for Ward. Shot clock down to 20. Falling down, Jensen with a wild shot. Let's see if Kurtz just tries to take one here. He, he's tried a couple times in the first half unsuccessfully, but. CAA Offensive Player of the Year showing you why. Shot clock winding down, and Kurtz gets his first on the backhand. Ty Kurtz, big time players step up in big time games. That's all I got to say. Tough take with the backhand. It was, again, just a matter of time, right? And you could see him kind of pressing in the first half. Probably one of the longer stretches of his career without a goal, right? Six quarters or so. And that's a huge one there for Delaware. Well, remember, this is a rematch of last year's CAA championship game. And Kurtz put on a show in that game. He scored six goals on the way to Delaware winning the title. Towson certainly didn't forget that in these two meetings back to back, but Kurtz, I mean, there's nothing anybody can do, can do to stop that. No doubt. It's just will and will and skill. Berkeley somehow gets through a couple of defenders. Now Villa Gomez. Back to a two goal Delaware advantage at nine to seven under two minutes to go in this third quarter. I think go back to Berkeley if you can. He's been the hot hand. Try to get him the rock off some movement. Villa Gomez trying to roll back inside. Ball's poked free. Weishauer can't come up with the ground ball. Delaware pushes it forward. Oh, my gosh. Oh, and Grant. Oh, my gosh. Flips it to oh. Kurtz, who shoots it high. Incredible end-to-end. -end. Speed Grant with the flip. 
I thought Kurtz was going to bury that. And how about those ball skills from Grant? Great hustle, too, from the freshman Mikey Weishauer sprinting back in the hole. Complete horizontal on the dive out there. Grant's still in there on this side of the field. And now he'll head back over and allow the offensive midfield to check in. It's Brendan Powers. Yep. Delaware going to, again, try to hold for one shot here. I felt like in the second quarter they went a little bit too early. Remember, Travis, Evan Long made that save and had an outlet opportunity. So you want to try to go, you know, I would say with anywhere between 20 and 15 seconds left on that shot clock. Now just under 30. This is Ryer Shell, seven goals in the regular season. Robinson. They don't want to let him get back to that left hand. He spins and he does. What a move. You caught it, Travis. You don't want to get him, let him get back to his left hand, but somehow he does through the double team. And again, it's seniors, captains stepping up for Delaware. Split the double team. Drop the hands, bring it back top shelf. Why not? I mean, that is smooth. Mike Robinson, his first goal today. Ball comes back here to Towson. Still a little bit of time left in this third quarter. Got to go. Back to a three-goal Delaware lead. Potter gives it up. Shoot it. And it's loose. And that is now the quarter comes to a close. So Towson gets back within one, but Delaware responds with back-to-back -back goals from their stars. Kurtz and Robinson making this a three-goal advantage, 10-7 to seven, as we go to the fourth. Well, don't forget, coming at the conclusion of this one, we will have the second semifinal for you here on the Cross TV of the men's side. Drexel and Stony Brook. They played overtime a couple of weeks ago in the middle of April. We should get another good one tonight. Opening faceoff set for 8.30 p.m. Eastern here at Delaware Stadium. CAA tournament action all day and all night long on the Cross TV. Now, bring to... The end, a all-day affair of CAA lacrosse. The two women's semifinals this afternoon at Towson. Got the two men's semifinals here tonight in Delaware. Travis Eldridge, Marcus Holman back with you for the start of the fourth. Delaware a 10-7 lead, three-goal advantage, and they'll get the first possession of this fourth quarter. Yep, and just back to your point, Travis, about all day of lacrosse, just an underrated day for college lacrosse fans across oh, the country. Oh, I love this day. Absolutely. 1 p.m. start for a couple early games, you know, maybe take off work early and then <laughs> we're rolling right into the weekend here with with conference tournaments. Day that really becomes an extension of the NCAA tournament for so many programs across the country. Even in some of the big conferences for a team like Michigan, who that win over Penn State certainly puts them in a conversation for an NCAA tournament berth for the first time in program history. Absolutely. Here's Jessen. He shoots way high. Team like Delaware trying to get back to the NCAAs for a second year in a row. Made that incredible run last year to the quarterfinals before losing to Cornell after they surprised the entire country by knocking off Georgetown. Good look here on the near side. Ward rolls back in front. Long somehow keeps it out. I don't even know if he knows how he kept it out. He was looking behind him thinking it went through as McNamara comes up with it off the ground. Got numbers. Chance to go. He'll release, and that's saved by Kilkiri. Huge save on the high bouncer, too. It was a deep shot, but great and read. Look who it is on the defensive yeah. end of the field. Mike Robinson with the ground ball, and he clears it himself. Man, that just jacks me right up, right? 
again, senior captain, semifinal game, sprinting back on defense, hustling after ground balls, right? Those are the little things Coach DeLuca talked about. Mike is one of the hardest workers on the team and doing all the little things right. He's showing why there. Ball behind a ward. Now Shell. You know, Robinson is in his career played face-off wings. That's how good he is off the ground. And just shows you how versatile he is as a player. Not just a great scorer. Two-way attackman? <laughs> we don't say it a lot. <laughs> kind of like kind of like Reed Bowering, the former Drexel yep. Dragon, who's now a loose ball machine in the NLL. Under 20 seconds on this shot clock for Delaware. Towson hanging in there, playing tough on the ball. Miller shoots wide. Delaware moving the ball well, finding open guys, but you know it's, it, it hasn't been easy for them. Ward goes behind the back, can't get it on Cage. And with the second left on this shot clock, I would assume that this will be one that Kurt sends to the corner. It's exactly the case. Yep. Delaware just knocking on the door there. That behind the back would have just erupted the crowd. But again, Delaware hanging around, right? Three-goal game. Get your first possession here of the, of the fourth quarter, right? I would like to see the ball in Berkeley stick if possible. Well, and I, right. I think it, it does feel as though in these first couple of possessions of the fourth quarter, Delaware is deliberately taking the air out of the ball to right. borrow a basketball expression to slow down the pace of this game, knowing they are up three here in the fourth. But it only works if you can cash in enough times that you can continue to hold on to the lead. So these are valuable possessions here at the other end for Towson to continue yep. to put the pressure on. No doubt. We'll see how they initiate. Probably going through X tier, get Berkeley on the backside. Let's see. Got DeMeo, who was working at X there. Now White Shower, the freshman. Picks up the pole in Wasson. Nice move by Berkeley. He draws uh -oh. a crowd. He can't split the two Delaware defenders. Nice Another ball, ball ends up on the turf, and now it's touched up by Delaware. We've yeah, got a flag down. They're going to get Grant here for a slash in the back, would be my guess. So Towson, for as physical as this game has been, we haven't seen a ton of penalties. I think right there, yep, yeah, in yeah. the leg. Big opportunity here for Towson, right? No... You got a big shooter in DeMeo on that lefty wing. Berkeley on the righty wing. And then Villa Gomez, obviously the 6'4 freshman, is an awesome goal scorer coming into this game with 27 goals on the season. Yeah, DeMeo's been the guy in the man up. Four man up goals to lead the Tigers. 12 of 39, just 30% on the year in the extra man. And they're going to shut Berkeley here. You see the shorty. Towson getting into their set here. Yeah, by shutting off Berkeley, should provide a lot more space for everybody else, but that shot deflected, scooped up. And once again, it is Delaware with it. This is Reed Kurtz, Ty's brother. Makes a great play at midfield, trying to play keep away with it, and has it checked out of his stick. Great hustle. Again, freshman Mikey Weishaus just He's the hustler, man. I've seen him all over the field. Huge ride back here. You're still man up, right? So now you can get another scoring opportunity. One minute penalty. And that penalty is now released. Step down shot. That was Villa Gomez from the far wing. It was. And we're back to even strength. By the way, we saw, said Reed Kurtz's name. Guy who's a short stick D midi when they are even strength, but then he'll go grab the pole on man down to help out this Delaware defense. <laughs> Love it. Swiss Army knife. Berkeley gets inside, and he's got another. He's got four tonight. 
He doesn't want his season to end, and he's playing like it. Getting to the middle of the field, right? He's best when he can attack off a ball movement like that. And he's finishing with authority. Puts this one right in the top left corner over Kilkiri's shoulder. Nice little head drop there. Drops his stick low, brings it back up top. Got to feed the beast if you're Towson. So they're back within two. Not going away just yet. And they get another possession. That could be the great equalizer. Constantinides at the faceoff. He has struggled at times in this game, but he's been one of the best guys in the conference at the X. Yep, the dance with who brought you, right? You're going to stick with him if you're Towson and, and trust that he's going to get you the rock here in the fourth. Second team, all CAA performer, Constantinides, for the second year in a row. Got to go to this. Again, and he's going to draw all sorts of attention. Got numbers now. If you move it quick, look out. White shower inside. Schreier just missed. That was a great look. Great offense from Towson there. That's exactly what you want. Just got to make those count. Villa Gomez off the end line. Or excuse me, DeMeo. Schreier. Weber stepped down. Kyokiri got a piece. Now Delaware can clear. Kilkiri now with nine saves tonight. That was a little shaky there. On It's been for Delaware in the clear. Nice job just securing possession, slowing it down here. Trust your offense, right? Trust your upperclassmen and playmakers. And you still got to be aggressive, right? We talked about that. With the clock now becoming a factor. Slipping it back around. Robinson has it on that far wing, and he'll circle all the way back toward the top of the box to Kohler. Time on Delaware's side as we tick under eight minutes to go. Trying to punch their ticket back to the CAA championship game. The CAA defending champs. Got numbers if you move it quick. Jessen, step down, just wide. All right, 13 seconds here. This is going to be Kurt again. Goes over the shoulder. <laughs> that is dirty. Calcin just, oh yeah, again, standing strong on defense, right? Yeah. Ben, ben don't break. Well, and once again, every one of these stops keeps Towson in the game. 10-8. Then Galia will just bring it over midfield himself. Now looking for somewhere to go with it. Delaware locking off every... Good job, outlet. pressing. Good job by Delaware. And it's taken away. Did it, somebody step over? Over and back, yep, over and back. Yep. Oh, yeah. They might have numbers here. Kurtz wants to <laughs> get going quickly. The officials will have none of that. And it allow Delaware to take some more time off the clock. And Travis, don't you just feel like, play I feel like playoff lacrosse too is just, there's nothing easy, right? Every clear tonight has been contested, you know? And I think, both of these coaches would probably be disappointed in, in their clearing numbers, but just teams hustling and riding hard to the midline, playing smart. Yeah, I mean, every play is contested. As that one goes top shelf, Robinson with the right hand makes it 11 to 8. Robinson with the right. Pretty rare. Yeah, we, we saw don't him see earlier roll, roll back and split the double and come back to his left hand, right? This one, he just leans that shoulder in. Snappy release. And you can hear it, you know, piping in. 
That's a big goal for Delaware. Second goal of the night for Mike Robinson. You know, it's it's easy to forget with the up and down year he's had with the injury that, I mean, it was you know, a year ago that Mike Robinson was the focal point of every single scouting report when you play Delaware. And then Ty Kurtz has the year he's had, and Robinson has had to kind of work his way back into form. And now yeah. Ty Kurtz is the guy. But don't forget, Mike Robinson is still the guy that was scoring nine goals in some games <laughs> just a season or two ago. No doubt. He really, really completes that unit at attack. And I've spoken about this too. I think they're the most complete attack unit in the country. You've got a bona fide righty playmaker and Kurtz. Robinson has range and he's a lefty. And then JP Ward, the quarterback down there as Kilkiri eats up a gumball there. Double digit saves now for Matt Kilkiri with 10. Big clear here for Delaware. Get the job done. Uh -oh. Kurtz has it on the ground for a second. Now he's got to pick up the ground ball. I think Gellia fell on top of him. And it'll be a loose ball push on Towson. I don't know if I agree with that. He's diving to make a play on the ball and maybe a, a ticky-tack one there. But, again, you, you think you're out of the clear. You touch it in the box, and then you get you double-teamed, and the ball's on the ground. And Helter Skelter in the middle of the field. See how much Towson really tries to press out now, kind of force the issue for Delaware's really taking their time as J.P. Ward has it stopped by Long. Rebound in front. Zingalia comes up with it. Tough Falls DB. loose again, and it's Zingalia again. Coach Natalin spoke about him as the leader of this defense, no doubt. Making big plays there. So Tigers trail by three, under five minutes to play. And again, these possessions just get more and more important for, for Towson, right? As time now becoming a factor. I still think just go back to Berkeley, get him the rock off movement if you can. He has been the guy. They tried to get it to him. Now he's got to hope it stays in on this side of the 50. Makes a nice play. DeMeo's got it. 30 seconds left on this shot clock. Swain. Schreier. Now Berkeley. DeMeo tries to squeeze it inside. Never got through. And there's Owen Grant again. And that's a skill that is very, very hard to teach. Just having your stick up in that lane. You only get that from years of practice and playing indoor, right? And Owen Grant just has that skill. Reminds me a lot of, of Graham Hossick at the professional level. Some high praise, but I, I don't disagree with you. <laughs> Defender falls down. Oh, oh what my a hit. gosh. It's Robinson off the ground who makes the play to keep the possession. My goodness. Jason Sider taking bodies there. Holy cow. Delaware keeps the possession as time is now very much a factor. Up by three. Under three minutes to play. Shot clock, though, is down to ten for J.P. Ward. Which way does he go? Question mark. Shoots high. Didn't get it on frame. And so this is most likely going to be another shot clock violation on Delaware. And Travis, I miss, misspoke earlier. That's Colby Bars, number 23. Yeah. I was looking at the wrong uh, roster sheet here. Colby Bars doing a great job taking bodies on the crease and then winning his matchup against J.P. Ward. He's won that matchup. Ward, a lot of Ward's goals, I think almost every one of them, has come off of either a skip pass or ball movement. So Barr's holding down his end of the bargain. Yeah, Barr is playing for Ryan Flanagan's 24-7 lacrosse club team in North Carolina, North Carolina native. First team all CAA performer this year. 
Browns out what is a pretty veteran unit defensively for the Tigers with McNamara, the senior, Barnes, the junior, Zagalia, the grad student. You hold this Delaware team to 11 goals, you're doing something right, but the offense yeah. hasn't been able to do quite enough to keep pace. Veteran defense, but still a pretty young overall group on the offensive end of the field. Berkeley, now Weber. Oh, great takeaway again. How many times have you said that? That's Kate Wasson. And Delaware is going to slow it down, take more time off the clock. Can hear the crowd start to shower their praises. I mean, between Wasson and Grant, Spears has had a couple of nice takeaways. This Delaware defense has made some really big plays. Goalie's yeah. out of the crease trying to pressure out. Ward's just playing keep away. And it was, I think the halftime adjustment was just dictating tempo to Towson, right? S sliding a little bit earlier, right? Sliding on any rollbacks. And they put the ball on the ground a bunch this, this half. Delaware takes a timeout. We'll keep it here as we are under a minute to play. And the Blue Hens can really taste it. Chance to go back to the CAA championship game. This is a program that has made this tournament now five consecutive years under head coach Ben DeLuca, who's now been here at Delaware for six seasons. And they are on the doorstep of having a chance to host the championship game here on Saturday. This is a chance to remind you, we do have the second semifinal coming up about 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. We'll have the two and three seeds in this conference tournament, Drexel and Stony Brook battle. And if you missed the first time those two met earlier this year, you missed a good one. An overtime thriller between those two programs. Actually, this meeting, just the, the second meeting this year, also just the second ever meeting between the two <laughs> programs as their new conference foes. So that game coming up in about an hour here at Delaware Stadium. Yeah, both coaches talked about just kind of the unfamiliar, unfamiliarity with each other in that first game. Now they know each other a little bit better. Definitely going to be a battle. Two very evenly matched teams. We put the kids to sleep. We got the late night here, 8.30 start. Oh, these guys aren't going to sleep anytime soon. <laughs> that guy is definitely not going to sleep. He's enjoying the tailgate and the Delaware win here tonight. Oh, they, they got the good stuff out early here at Delaware Stadium. And this Delaware team going to have a chance to celebrate. We, we had a chance to talk with Ben DeLuca earlier this week. And, you know, this Delaware program has been the top seed in this conference tournament for a couple of years now. But this is their first opportunity to host because the last two due to COVID, it, there was a shift in who it wasn't just it wasn't a whoever gets the top seed host, it was a predetermined site. Well, this is the first year that we went back to having it be the top seed at the end of the season gets a chance to host. And it's a special moment for Delaware. And you can tell that they are really treasuring the chance to not only host the semifinal, but a win here tonight and have a chance to host the championship game on Saturday. Yeah, he, he did. Coach spoke about how special that was, you know, and that's meaningful to him as he's been building this program for six, seven years, and, you know, it means a lot to play in front of their home crowd, and I feel like they, even though they started slow tonight, you know, they were able to just hang around and control the momentum of this game, you know, kind of from the second quarter on. Well, another time out here with 40 seconds to play. Gives us a chance to talk a little bit about this Towson team whose season is likely here going to come to an end. It, it, a season that started rough. They, they won that first game and then hit a slide. Losing five in a row, ended up dropping to one in five of the year. Credit to this team. They battled back. It got a win against Delaware at the end of the regular season. A, a game that, you know, you're playing a Delaware team unbeaten in the conference, coming to your place. Team, a game that Townsend pretty much needed to win, try to punch their ticket to the conference tournament. They get, they win. They get back here. But going to come up on the 
wrong end here against a very talent, talented Delaware team. But uh, as, as we've mentioned throughout, there is some really, really good young talent on this Tigers roster. We've seen it throughout the night. Yeah, you, you, you got to be excited about the, the future of the offense, right? You're, you're going to lose the Mayo and, and Berkeley. But you've got some young stars that have, have gotten a lot of playing time this year. Weishar, Villa Gomez, Ryan Schreier. Um, you know, you lose Reese Potter in the middle of, of the field, too. And Garrett Zingalia, who we've mentioned a lot tonight. But, you know, defensively, I feel like Towson will always be stout. You know, yeah. we, we've talked about just that as an identity of their program. And, um, you know, offensively, the, the future is bright. So, you know, again, they, I think their defense – did a great job tonight. You know, you hold Delaware to 11. That's that's doing a pretty good job. Berkeley looking for one more. Stay Towson ball. This is Villa Gomez. Couple of assists here tonight. No goals for the freshman. Weber puts the brakes on. Back in front! Draws the flag. Was he in the crease before he landed? Yes. Ooh. We got a flag. So was he pushed, probably? Yeah, and so this the the goal will not count because he I believe he stepped in the crease as he was taking off. I think that was the call by the official. But that in theory should still give us the penalty. So it is a push on Kevin Lynch. No goal, but the penalty does count. Here's another look. I don't know. I thought he took off outside the crease. Yeah, it looked good to me. I'm saying maybe a stick or a different body part landed there before the ball went to the back of the net. The crease inside the crease. Still a uh, <laughs> interesting rule in... in Division one men's oh, lacrosse. But. Oh, that could be. I believe he did land in yeah. the goal mouth. I think, yeah, I think he got a piece of the goal mouth. That's it. You know, and and, and Weber comes back as a midi. Oh, oh, my goodness. Villa Gomez off the crossbar. Good hustle by Kurtz. That'll do it. Ty Kurtz gets the standing. Oh, you know, he didn't have the best game. Certainly of his career, and I'm sure he will be happy not to see Towson gold and black on Saturday in the championship game, but he does enough, and this Delaware offense does enough. Led by J.P. Ward, first half hat trick. The Blue Hens, the defending champs, are headed back to the CAA championship game with an 11-8 win here in the semis. Big performance from J.P. Ward, as you mentioned. Kiyokiri at 55% in the cage. And then, you know, the two-headed monster at, at, at the face-off X holding their own and, and winning that battle. Um, and just a solid, solid overall performance by Delaware. I really liked how their defense played tonight. So the Blue Hens punch their ticket for Saturday's championship game. They'll meet either Drexel or Stony Brook here at Delaware Stadium, and they will have a chance to host that CAA championship game here at Delaware Stadium. Well, we're gonna step aside. When we come back, we'll show you our play of the game. Delaware, 11 eight winners here over Towson in the CAA semis. The CAA Men's Lacrosse Championship is brought to you by Jersey Mike's, a sub above, and by Ticket Smarter, the official ticket resale partner of the CAA. Think smarter, think ticket smarter. We welcome you back here to Delaware Stadium. Delaware punching their ticket to the CAA championship game with an 11-8 win over Towson here in the first semifinal of two here at the CAA Men's Lacrosse Championship. Take a look at our updated bracket here for this tournament. It's Delaware, of course, moving on. They'll meet the winner of our next semifinal coming your way at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time here on Lacrosse TV between Drexel and Stony Brook. But Delaware has their ticket punched for Saturday at 3.30 p.m. Eastern. But now it is time for our sub above play of the game presented by Jersey Mike's. And, you know, to East Delaware's all-time leading goal scorer. And I think it's got to go to Ty Kurtz for this individual effort. Huh, Marcus? No doubt. This was late in the shot clock. 
you know, Kurtz had been held scoreless up until this point, you know, going back to the last game that Delaware and Towson had played, and I think this extended their lead back to two. So this was not only an epic backhanded goal, but it was also a huge goal in terms of momentum of the game and then obviously for his confidence as a player. So kudos to Ty Kurtz. And so that is tonight's sub above play of the game presented by Jersey Mike's. What a performance here today by Ty Kurtz on that play. Just the one goal, but it does enough as the Blue Hens are headed back to Saturday's championship game. So that'll do it for us here for our first semifinal. Once again, Delaware 11 8 winner, winners over Towson. For our entire crew and Marcus Holman, I'm Travis Eldridge. We say so long for now from Delaware Stadium. We'll see you in, in about an hour for the second semifinal between Drexel and Stony Brook. But for now, it's Delaware headed to the championship game on Saturday with an 11 8 win.